tell you a story about these Brussels sprouts. So these sprouts, well, one, they're raining on me right now. These sprouts are from last winter. I had no idea that you could leave the plants in and they would be fine until the next winter. This is one where I cut the stock down and then I couldn't pull it out, so I just left it. And they're legit, like, look at this guy. He's growing, these are growing now. These look a little bit brown on the outside and I'm sure my dad would tell me exactly what's wrong with them, but I'm just gonna peel off all of the yucky and get the Brussels sprouts underneath. Who knew? I, I, I've been gardening my whole life and I did not know. I've never used the slicey mechanism on here with this new food processor, so I hope I'm doing it right. It, I, it can only go one way, so let's see. Um, okay, do that. I just, I don't want to slice my onions. After yesterday and my like immense tearing issue, I, I just want to do it like this. So does this work? so easy. This is so easy. Shall we caramelize? Since those were so easy, should we do our Brussels sprouts too? Now I love like shaved Brussels sprouts when they're nice and thin, but it's kind of a pain. Not with this. Is this like an ad for food processors? Cause I, I feel like it is, and it's definitely not sponsored, but you should get a food processor. Achieved. Okay, those are caramelizing, water's boiling. We'll do these after the onions. This is one very large pile of onions but I'm not going to be intimidated and I'm going to just reduce, reduce, reduce and season. Let's get some salt in there, some pepper, ooh, maybe some thyme. Potatoes are boiling. This pile has reduced significantly and it's releasing a lot of juices, which is great. You can see they're speckled with thyme and pepper and salt. So we're just going to be patient and keep doing their magic. Potatoes are done. You can hear the onions in the back. They're still doing their onion thing. So what we're gonna do is just add some butter. Just like have some ends of the butter. You can use vegan butter. Um, I just have the ends of this butter, so this is just what I'm gonna do. And a little bit of milk. Now I'm a big fan of the dairy-free milk. I think Ripple is really good in this because it's it's thicker, um, but I have the ends and some buttermilk, so that's what I'm gonna do. It's like the dregs, so you just need a little bit. And this is when I miss, miss my potato masher. I'm just gonna do this, and I'm not gonna season these, okay? Uh. I'm not gonna season them because my caramelized onions are heavily seasoned. And I'm also gonna be adding some just like little shreds of cheese. And it's nice and salty and flavorful. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna be mashing with my not potato masher. Back to the onions, as you see, when they're starting to get brown, and if they stick to the bottom, it's okay to deglaze the pan with a little bit of broth or white wine or water. Just, this is a very non-stick pan, but if you have one that, you know, it's really starting to stick, you can like push the bits, but you want those bits to come off the bottom of the pan as they're starting to brown. These are, have reduced probably by, I don't know, 80%, this is, not very many anymore. So as you can see, I've got some cheese nuggets in there. They're starting to melt into those potatoes as the potatoes are hot, right? Um, but then I'm gonna add the onions to it. Oh yeah. 
and that hot on top of those cheese little nuggets right there, this is really going to start doing a number on these potatoes. Okay. In the meantime, let's get the Brussels sprouts in this thing. Hot pan, oil, and just want to get them so they're a little bit crispy, but not, not burned. So they're, they're already sauteed right now, but I want to, I want to start getting some brown on these little nuggets. Ooh, starting to happen. This is a surprising one. So let's taste just the Brussels sprouts. It's just the Brussels sprouts. Okay. I salted them already. It's pretty good, but I want to add a little bit of honey just for a surprising flavor because remember we've got those good caramelized onions in there, those pockets of cheese. And we thought just, and you can hear the honey is like working. I just thought this would add just a fun dimension to the flavor. If you don't want to do honey, you don't do honey. But if you don't do honey, please do some pomegranate on top, just for the sweetness. I do not have any pomegranate, sadly. I have a tree in the backyard and it is, um, it's not making any yet. Okay, let's get this flavored. So I've been letting it sit covered, right? I have the lid on so it could just like do its thing. And you can see the cheese is starting to like melt into swirls. And that's fantastic. So let's just sprinkle these on top. Now, if you wanted to individually plate the potatoes and then sprinkle, that's fancy and fun. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go like that. But do you see how pretty this would be with some pomegranate? I wish I had some. Let's taste. I mean, come on. So remember, I did not season the mashed potatoes themselves because the onions were heavily seasoned and perfect maybe even a little bit like over peppery because when I mixed it with mashed potatoes and the Brussels sprouts, they were gonna be fine. Okay, let's get the perfect bite. This is not a single serving, FYI. Um, it's just my family that's gonna be eating it. So that's why I'm just dipping right in. So there you go. So Thanksgiving, right? I was just dreaming of Thanksgiving food day today and I thought this would be really, really good. And it's really, really good. So do you want to add this to your collections and maybe make it for the holidays? <gasps> then it would be like I was right in your kitchen with you. Have a terrific day. I hope it's um, flavorful. It's got more cheese pockets, lots of fiber, and vitamin C. Bye.